Hi everyone. Uh, so first, let's just stop looking at this cringe picture. Um, so my name is Silvio, and I will tell you something about uh, how you can boost your productivity using GitHub Copilot. Um, so for the beginning, let's just quickly say what uh, GitHub Copilot is. Actually, before I do that, let me just ask you if you can raise your hand who used Copilot so far, or I, or is using it. Okay, so that's I would say half, half of the people. Um, so hopefully for other half, I can just make you consider using it or trying it. Um, and that should be sponsored by GitHub, but okay. Um, so uh, GitHub Copilot is an AI-powered code assistant, which is developed by GitHub OpenAI Microsoft. And it is basically an autocomplete auto AI tool. So when you code, it um, goes to your file your whole project and combines your files, your project, with um, with uh, publicly available source code that is found on GitHub. Um, based on that, those uh, public av publicly available repositories and your files, it is context aware and it provides context aware code suggestions uh, based on your code. That means that um, you can it, you will trigger a suggestion based on either you typing your code, or you can actually manually write something in a natural language. Like uh, you can ask it a question, like you can ask uh, ChatGPT. Uh, it basically works the same. So how, do, how does it work? I already said um, it is. It uses AI models which are trained on a natural language. Natural language. That's why you can ask it questions like ChatGPT and also publicly available source code, uh, which means it learns based on that and it will create a suggestion based on your code and publicly public uh, repositories. It is trained on all languages that appear in public repositories, uh, which is a great thing because that means it is available for almost all languages or all languages all languages that are found publicly on the GitHub um, repositories. Um, and it is called Copilot, not Autopilot. Uh, I believe, I think that is important because um, some of you might think that it will do your work instead of you, that it will just create methods that you can directly use. When instead, um, it is Copilot, which means it will complete your work, it, it, it will finish your work for you, so complete your lines. Complete your methods and your sentences, so on. This doesn't work again. Okay. Okay. So, how you can set it up? It's very easy. You just go in, into GitHub, you go into settings, and there is a section called Copilot where you need to subscribe, subscribe for it because it's not free. I believe for individual use, it's $10 per month. Um, but for students, teachers, and open source contributors, it's free, so you can update some readme and get, <laughs> get a copy for free, basically. Um, and uh, there you can find two, two very important uh, settings. In my opinion, first one is uh, GitHub profile can allow or block suggestions matching public code. If you allow this, it means that um, suggestions that you will get can literally be copy-paste from some public repository, which in some cases you don't want to do. So you can allow or disallow that. I think it's somewhere around 150 characters. Above that, it will uh, block copy-paste code. Uh, below that, it will not be detected as copy-paste. Um, and another setting is allow GitHub to use my code snippets for product product improvements, which means that it cannot use your code for um, giving other people suggestions. This doesn't work again. Okay. Um, to install it in Android Studio, it's very easy. It's just a plugin that you install from Marketplace. You log in with your GitHub account, and in the bottom right corner, you get this uh, little GitHub Copilot icon where you can log in, enable it, and disable it. That's basically it. Okay, uh, keyboard shortcuts are a big 
part of using Copilot because that's how you interact with it. Interact with it. Uh, once it give you, gives you a suggestion, you can use a tab to accept a suggestion or escape to dismiss it. And one more important uh, shortcut is trigger a suggestion. Because uh, sometimes you don't want to use, let's say, Copilot suggestion you want to have or you will get just a regular uh, Android Studio suggestion. So you can use this uh, shortcut to trigger Copilot to give you a suggestion. Okay, there are some more Copilot settings like um, you can disable that it will automatically show you completions. Uh, some people can find it um, annoying that it constantly pops up with uh, suggestions. Um, you can also show ID completion side by side uh, because if um, you have Copilot completions turned on by default, you will not get just a regular Android Studio completion or suggestions. And uh, you can turn it on or off for uh, some languages that you like. <laughs> so, let me show you a simple example. Uh, this is just a simple screen, which is a currency exchange. Uh, just to give you some context of um, my example, we have just two items uh, where you can enter some amount and in the next item it will just calculate the amount times exchange rate. And that's it. So I will jump quickly to Android Studio, where I have um, I have almost whole feature complete, but I need still need to add some things. And on that these examples, I want to show you how how it looks. Um, so let's say that for the beginning we want to create some data class that will contain our currency data. <coughs> Uh, which in this example can be okay. not that important, but uh, we want to say, for example, ID, uh, flag resource, uh, currency name, and then amount. That's it. <clears throat> nice byte, by the way. Um, <laughs> so let's say we don't want to write a data class by, by ourselves. Uh, what we can do is just write a comment, something like create a currency data class containing all the fields, like this. Um, after the cursor, you can see this is already a Copilot suggestion. Uh, so we can press Start to accept it, and then we can say something like ID, name, okay, exchange rate, and flag resource ID. When you run to the next line, it will give something that we don't care about. And since this is a autocomplete uh, tool, we most times need to start writing, and based on what we write, and based on a comment that we write above, it will create a suggestion. Like you can see here, it creates this whole um, data class based on our comment. We can just press tab, and that's, that's it. That's all um, Copilot generally. Um, let's quickly jump to screen. This is just a composable. Uh, what's in it? It's not that important. But just another example. Uh, you know that when you're writing a composable screens, you need to write a preview, right? And sometimes that can also be annoying. Um, and Copilot can also help you there. So um, when I just press Enter, below my composable, it already knows that I want to create a preview. So we can just press tab here, enter, it, will know, it knows that I need composable annotation, press enter again, and then it will create a whole, uh, whole preview by itself, like it took us uh, two seconds to generate this, um, and you don't have to write everything yourself. Uh, there are some mistakes, like it didn't, um, recognize our trouble, so we can just um, correct that, and that is it. Like this was very easy, right? And uh, we need to finish our view model. Uh, we have some code here which, which is very simple. Uh, we create some state which um, takes currency from all currencies. That will be a mock list that we will create. 
just a mock list of currencies. Um, we have some methods here that just uh, swap currencies and handle amount from change, which basically just calculates the amount to currency. Um, so for the beginning, we want to create a mock list of currencies, and I guess all of you know how, again, annoying it can be to create some mock, mock objects, mock data. Uh, this is where Copilot can help you as well. Um, so we can, again, we even don't need to write a commentary because it already knows, knows based on based on uh, this name here and what we are doing with this small currency is what we want to do. So basically it generated the whole list of currencies by itself. And you can just um, uh, change what's wrong. For example here it didn't recognize the the flag trouble and everything goes it's basically like ID name. It gave it some mock exchange rate uh, droplets are gone, but for example, if we delete all this, next time it will actually learn from our previous example and it will generate correct currencies. Let me just quickly show you that. So if I just delete that, press enter, the next uh, currency will actually have a correct resource ID because it learns from, from your previous example. And we are missing here one more thing, which is this method, uh, which is called calculate amount using exchange rate. This basically means um, it needs to just uh, multiply your input with the exchange rate. That's it. So as soon as we press enter, it will generate something. We can accept that and we can look at what it's generated. So ju just based on a function name that we were calling, and from parameters that we uh, send to that uh, method, it already knows what it needs to accept and what it needs to do. So basically, it takes the amount. Amount converted is amount double times currency dot exchange rate, which is correct. It formats it and returns a string. And that is basically Copilot generated. It is correct, and that's it. And uh, let's say we want to write a documentation for this method, and I don't want to do that myself because why would I write a documentation, right? Um, so I can just mark what are the. Uh -huh. um, so we can just do this, and it will basically generate a whole documentation on its own. Uh, if you're not uh, happy with this, you can just press space, and it will just keep continue suggesting more more and better. Uh, the same thing it will do with parameters and what it returns, and that's it. Um, it is very important to just check what it generates because often it can generate something that looks okay and you think it is okay, but it's actually not. And it can be so, some little mistakes, so please, if you're using this, just check what it generated before you actually use it. Uh, looks like it generated an error. Uh, yes, because this is uh, knowable and here it. But it's documentation. Like nobody gives a fuck about that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's why you don't need to check documentation. Just you need two seconds to create this, and then someone else who is reviewing your PR will be like, "It has some documentation, so let's let's <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay. <laughs> Let me go back to the presentation. Um, okay, so these are just examples that I uh, showed. Like you can use it to generate methods from documentation or based on a function name, generate documentation. But who gives a shit about that? Um, you can create data classes like like uh, I already shown, and you can also create data classes from JSON, which can be useful. Create mock object. And one more thing is generating tests. That can also be very useful. Um, because if you have tests that are structured similarly in your app, it will basically take the same structure and generate tests that are structured similarly. And they will often be correct. But um, 
if you create, let's say, a new file for tests and you want to create a first test, it will more often not be that correct because it has nothing to learn from. But when you give it an example, it will follow that example and next time it will most probably be correct. And um, you can also talk to it like you talk to ChatGPT using this slash slash Q, you ask it a question, and in the next line it will generate an answer for you. Um, but I did not find honestly that useful because it's not that smart for these kind of <coughs> things. I still rather use ChatGPT for this, but it can answer some more simple questions. And uh, just remember, it's not perfect, right? Sometimes you can get this and uh, <laughs> I, I, I. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So, some usage tips. Um, always remember to use meaningful variable and method names because it learns context from your naming and based on that it will give you a suggestion. You should break code into smaller methods because Copilot is um, it works better with smaller pieces of code that are also named um, this descriptively, that is a word. Be as precise as possible, modify the comment until you get the desired result. That's also one, one tip, because you might not get your expected result at first, but you can just modify the same comment until you get one, and that's it. And always remember that you can produce wrong body or insecure code, so always review the suggestions before you actually use it. <coughs> what are the benefits? Like, it increases productivity, obviously. It makes coding faster. Uh, sometimes it gives ideas, because sometimes you just get stuck somewhere. You, have, you, don't, know. you don't know what to write, and then it will generate something, and you can use that something to further build on. And it can just give you ideas what what you're working on. For example, with Compose, if you just start start working with Compose and you do not know the syntax, it can generate something and you, you can use that something or, or just check it online and um, basically work on that. And it is also useful when writing well applied code and writing tests, as I said, and with uh, having multi-language support, uh, as I already mentioned, it can be very useful when working in some other, other language that you're not familiar with. It will also work with that and give you some sum. Uh, you could be worried about your privacy, and it collects three things which is user engagement data, which is basically data how you interact with it, uh, which means if you accept a suggestion, decline a suggestion, things like that. Next thing is prompts that you ask it, so it takes input, your input. And third thing is a suggestion that it gives you. So they claim to only collect those three things, if you of course disallow it to use your code base for further improvements. These are some numbers, um, an inter interesting experiment that they did, um, where they had 95 people, which they split it into two groups. So one group of 45 people that used Copilot, and another group that did not use Copilot for writing a web server in JavaScript. Both of the groups finished there are tasks in similar percentage, so 78 percentage um, of people finish their tasks, tasks who use Copilot, so that's a bit higher than 70 percent who did not use. But an average time to complete a task is dramatically lower. It is one hour and 11 minutes compared to two hours and 41 minutes, which is basically 55 percent less time, and I think that's that's huge. And they also had. With another survey with more than 2,000 responses, where like 88% of people said that they are, are more productive with Copilot. And like 96% of people said that they're faster 
with repetitive tasks, and I think that's a really high percentage. And I'm going to go through the rest of them because that's the result. <coughs> and um, for the end, I'm just going to go through some community feedback that I found interesting. One, one uh, person said that they've used it for a long time, and when it's not there, they feel like it's when you turn off normal autocomplete or write in a notepad, which is fu funny, but, but it's true. Like, if you turn it off and you got used to it, you find yourself waiting for it to generate something, even though you might not use it, but you just wait for it to generate something. Um, and it's not there, and you're just, you're standing there like, <laughs> what's going on? Um, some other feedback um, were like, it was the most helpful when writing tests, because all the tests inside the project are structured similarly, so they would get good suggestions um, when they, as soon as they start writing the name of the test. And another, another uh, feedback was, uh, they used Copilot to work in order to solve a Jenkins problem, which they had no prior experience with. But in the end, Copilot was a um, great help. So as I said, uh, even if you are working with some other language or something that you have no a lot, a lot of experience with, it can still help. And that's it. Uh, are there any questions? Yes. Um, first is how, how do you combine the types from the ID, so the typical type and that for the suggestion? Um, because yeah, right now you start writing data mm -hmm. and then you hit that for data class. Uh, how, how do you combine the two, or how do you know when it's going to be? You mean how do how do I combine what I'm typing and? Uh, I comment? No, like what, what, what? existing autocomplete from Android Studio. Studio. Ah, now that, that can be tricky, like having the two. Um, the thing is that, as I mentioned, a lot of people find it annoying. Like, people can find it annoying when it gives you, like, um, if I delete this and I go here, it will su suggest something. And if you start writing something, I believe um, you can use control space to give you, to, to just decline a uh, copilot suggestion and to get just a normal suggestion. There's a toggle button. Yes, correct, correct. Uh, there are, in, in set, like in settings, I, in, I have it in presentation. So basically you can, you can do this. You can uh, automatically show completions and turn it on or off. So if you turn it off, it will not give you automatically completion, mm -hmm. and you'll need to manually use your short, shortcut, which I will set, to show your completion. You can also show ID completion side by side, but uh, I did not find that very useful because it just puts one thing over another and it doesn't look great, and it's a bit difficult to, to just see what's going on when you get two different suggestions. Okay, thank you. And then the second question, um, when, when they did the survey, um, are there some results that are, let's say, seniority specific, so when, you're, when you don't really get stuck for the ideas, or when you're not uh, a beginner that looks for the code, um, it may be the ones with more years of experience also rates um, such a productivity bump. Uh, yeah, I don't know what are the seniorities of people in this survey. <coughs> I really have no answer to the question, but for for people that have our seniority, I I still think it can be useful because it will generate something, um, and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to generate something that you don't when you don't know what to write. But it can just complete your work. Like one I can, I, sorry. Okay, yeah, one example could be, for example, when you are mapping from some API data models to some domain-level objects. 
Let's okay. and maybe it's not a strictly one-to-one -one mapping. I guess it can like or, or, or to suggest some smart way of which fields map to something and stuff like that. So I guess th that saves you time regardless of your seniority level. Yeah, so it it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to generate something that you don't know what about. It can be like this. You see this uh, this can write a junior or a senior, but uh, you don't, why would you write everything yourself if you don't need to? Yeah, it took me one know. second to generate this. Yeah, now it's certainly it. for uh, tests as well. Yes, of course. You write and code and then you say, fix me the tests. Correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> and not, not just that, but... <laughs> Wait, you are writing your tests? Um, so, maybe another example can be, like, I had, I had a situation where I had to uh, create extension methods for some new classes. Let's say this is our end class. We need to create an extension called, I don't know, currency dot flag base ID, okay? I mean, in this case, it doesn't make sense that much, but let's say we want to create it for some reason, and we can just type when this, and I'll look at, look at Mark, how do I create so this is <laughs> <laughs> look at this. How like just imagine you you have ten N classes which all of them have like ten inputs and you have uh, drawable resource ID, string resource ID, and you need to create for some reason extension methods. How long would it take for you to write everything? It's very simple. Anybody can do it, but it's time consuming and it's annoying. But your story point estimation then don't match. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's why you can just go and have a beer, a drink, coffee. And <laughs> when, the, when the co pilot is working instead of like, how, how easy, how easy was, was this? How quick? Yeah, that certainly helps because right now it's like, okay, we're doing it in the head. Then do I do it with multi-line selection? That's usually what in this case I would do. So just multi-line and maybe two mm -hmm. the time and do it in one yeah. And then, I don't know, when I had to uh, make launchers for uh, over 70 banks, then it was yeah, easiest to write a script mm -hmm. that does it for you. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah certainly in some areas I see, mm -hmm. I see how it's kind of Yeah, I mean, these, these are very simple examples. Um, but, I mean, in some complex situations, bigger methods, it doesn't work that great. Like, that's a reality. I'm not trying to sell your product, I'm just trying to give you a um, realistic picture. In some complex situations, it's not that great, but in simple cases, it's, it really is. It can really speed up work and you don't have to deal with these kinds of things. Here is the ticket, fix me the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, enough for myself. Uh, thank you. I have one more question. Uh, yes. Now the Copilot also supports like the chat interface, I believe, in Android Studio. Did you have time to test that out? And maybe how it compares to ChatGPT or something like that? Uh, I did not test that. Uh, I think, I don't think if that is... If you That's have to... hash code. Sorry? It's, uh, it's, it's still can Yeah, and also for... It's the nightly and uh, you something. need to get on the list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, also, um, I think s starting next year, they will also integrate, integrate it to GitHub web page. Um, and you will basically be able to, like, some example is you will be able to, when reviewing other pull requests, just mark a piece of code and it will explain it to you what it does. And for example, uh, when opening a pull request, you will have a little button that you will be able to press and it will generate a description for you. Oh. <laughs> so that's Copilot to generate code and do code review. So. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe in the future it will be called autopilot. I mean, yes.
I have three simple questions and one more complicated one, but I'll leave that for the... <laughs> so for the simple questions, can I say to, to co-pilot to skip on some suggestion? Like, I don't want to have this suggestion anymore. You know, would you suggest something like that? That's the first thing. The second question is, if I have published an open source library in GitHub under I don't know, MIT license, is there some kind of a toggle somewhere around the settings so that I can say to GitHub, I don't want for this library to be included in Copilot? And third question is, do you think it's a multi billion dollar idea to start producing keyboards with only one key? And then <laughs> and then okay, I will answer the last question first, definitely. <laughs> um, first question. What was? What was? I'm asking the copilot to uh -huh. generate a hashing algorithm, and it uses MD5, which is broken. And I say to copilot, I don't want to have this suggestion anymore. Please use something else. Okay, but what? What do you? What do you consider this suggestion? What is this suggestion? So let's say it, it produces a function mm -hmm. for hashing and it uses MD5 as a hashing algorithm. And I want to say to Copilot, I don't want to have MD5 as a suggestion anymore. Is this an option? Like, can you just come with him? Yeah. 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 yeah, train him what's good and what's yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's a really good question. Because that also can lead to follow up questions that are we 100% sure that GitHub Copilot is not using the data we are mm -hmm. generating for training GitHub? That's a really good question and a really good example, and I'm not sure. I have to say I'm not sure. You can send me an email tomorrow, 8 in the morning. <laughs> Look, we can, we can try it out later. Just, we can have a beer and try it out. I mean, that, that, uh, that also works. And uh, the one with the settings GitHub repository as well. So, is there, <laughs> so if I publish something in uh -huh. which is open source, can I say to GitHub that, that, that I don't want for this library to be included? Yeah, so this should be a repository setting, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> we can check it out. I don't know. Uh, I would say no, because it is public. And it uses all public repositories. Um, maybe there is some toggle that you can turn off, so it doesn't use your repository, even if it's public, I don't know, I would have to check it. Cool. What if you ask the copilot question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see, I don't know. But can you be 100% sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> so. It's a pretty fun idea. Yeah. Yeah. So if I have a public repository, is there a photo? Not to make it right, not to use my code in other suggestions. Create a silk bag. <laughs> 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 I think it's easy to know. You need the queue. Yeah, yeah. 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 My bad, my bad. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. 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 So you can make it right. <laughs> so, there you have it. No, you can make it right. There you go. You, you, asked for, you asked for it. Can you try this with the first question? Yeah, suggest to the, the codes. But I don't know. Exactly in the view model. We, we ask you to stop suggesting silk glasses. Try with one of the currencies, it might be easier. In view model, or equivalent symbol. What do you mean, like? Uh, yeah, I this can, I can, I can your function, but. Maybe I can write something like uh, create a mock current sys, but do not use L. L. That, should, that should work. Like, uh, you should be able to tell it what not to generate, but it probably, it probably works only now, in this file, in this moment. Yeah. Next yeah. time, it will, I guess, not work. Okay, it's, it, it's not generating anything, but I, I believe the answer to the question is yes. Because you can write it something like create a mock list of uh, currencies that currencies 
Elf, because of Per, Musada, that's it. And then it will create that. So if you say. Okay, but now you cannot go into, I don't know, new line and say, no, this fix use just USD. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you, can, you, can, totally. you can delete this and modify comment. Maybe okay. that's, that, that would be a better suggestion because otherwise you have both, no? Create enough, another list but without. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. It works. Okay. No. <laughs> 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 okay, so <laughs> I'm not here. Please. Equals. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> yeah. Filter was fast. Uh, so how long have you been using it now? Did you notice it getting better for the project? Like. Like I would not I, start bad and then go better. No, I would I would maybe not say that it got better. I would say that uh, with time I got better with using it. Just by communicating communicating with it. Because uh, with time you learn you learn how it behaves and you can you expect something from it. Like, uh, when you first start using it you don't know how it behaves and how you need to communicate with it. But with time, you just learn, you can modify the comment, like, uh, be more precise, and then you will get better suggestions. Okay. Yes? You now feel like you're in the movie, Her. I did not I did not I did not I I mean, Jericho asked something about that MD5 hashing algorithm. You can, I don't think you can do it with this, but you can do it with chat. If oh, it's a chat version, because I told you not to use a version of Jenkins, uh, and it used another version of Jenkins. But that means that the chat version is using your data for training example. No, it's not. It's using your data for suggestions, but you're telling it what not to say. It has some context, and this doesn't have context. Yeah. It doesn't have context. And if you're interested in using chat, it's available in VS Code if you're willing to step down from under the studio to VS Code. Yes. Can you ask it uh, to modify or fix existing code or just generate a new one? Good question. Uh, I think with, with, with this, maybe we already answered that question. Like here, it took what it already had and made some some adjustments to it. I mean, it's not the best. Uh, but maybe. for example, you have uh, the mock currencies variable. Okay. Um, I would, can, you ask, can you ask it to add uh, additional two currencies into existing code? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so it just generates a uh, yes. piece of code. Yes. yes. You could put a comma and yeah. there. I mean, we can try, but it will it will not modify. Um... <laughs> it will. <laughs> no, uh, I mean no. It's not. Uh, it will not. Comma. Yeah. I mean. Yes, you can do this. Comma enter. It will generate something. Enter. It will generate something. So on, so on, so on. You can do this, yes. But it will not uh, modify existing code. Okay, any more questions? No? Okay. Then thank you for your